good morning to one and all. Uh, myself, Dr. Ganesh Miriala. I am working as assistant professor in the Department of uh, Electronics and Communication Engineering, MLRIT Institute of Technology and Hyderabad. So, this is the second lecture. So, on overview. So, in this lecture, we are going to discuss the uh, representation of the continuous signals and the representation of the discrete time signals and uh, some basic types of signals we are going to be discuss it. So, in continuous time signal, we can represent in graphical and functional format. So, before going to that, I would like to give some clarity on the, what is the main discrete and uh, continuous signal. For suppose one, one signal is there, like a continuous signal, it is some x of t. Though, so, this is a continuous time signal. So, we need to convert this signal into the discrete time signal. It is. Let us say it is a x of n signal. So, this process is known as sampling process sampling sampling process. So, first of all x of t is going to be converted into the x of n. So, this process is named it as it is a sampling process and there is some specific theory there is named it as a uh, sampling theorem. So, how we are going to be get this continuous time signal into the discrete time signal. So, for this one there is one sample holding circuit. We can take this as a some sampling circuit. So we are giving the x of t e as an input to the this sampling circuit, and we are getting the x of n. Okay, so we are going to be get the x of n. This is the continuous signal uh, generation process. But what's happening in this box exactly? So, in general, in a real world, we will have the only continuous time signals, but not the discrete time signals. To get the discrete time signals, we are by means of we are converting the signal from the continuous into the discrete time signal. So, how this process will take care? So, look at here. So, for suppose if this is my signal, now I am I am taking one box as I mentioned it is. using a sampling circuit, it is act as a switch, it is simply it is act as a one switch from here to there. So, where T is there, T is equals to, I am substituting it is N capital T S, where T is there, I am substituting T is equals to capital N T S. Now, X of T will become, X of T will becomes X of N T S. What is this T S? This T S is named it as a sampling time or you can call it as a sampling interval. So, it is a sampling interval. So, what is the function will operate to get the discrete time signal? I am taking it as a see if the same signal this is a continuous x of t now this is a t as I mentioned t is equals to NTS over here. T is equals to NTS. So, that I can write it as a X of NTS capital TS and this T is also equals to I can write it as a NTS. So, with the sampling time or interval TS, we are generating the discrete time signal. So, what is this TS over here? So, for instant of time TS, the switch is opened. When the switch is opened, then that particular time the signal is going to be off mode. So, I am taking it a present it is at the 0, the switch is closed. When the switch is closed, the x of t as it is will forward into the uh, output port. Let us take it as a input port and this is a output port. So, when x of t at t is equals to 0, the switch is closed. That means, there is a connection between these two ports, input port and the output port. So, that we will get the this point, first point. And next, I am opening the switch, I am opening the switch for TS duration, that means sampling time or you can call it as a sampling interval duration. I am opening, I am opening the switch that is named it as a TS time, that means from here to here, let us take it is a TS seconds, TS seconds. Now, at this, up to this point, my switch is opened. Open means there is no connection between the 
input to the output so that the corresponding output is zero. The corresponding output is zero up to TS seconds. Once TS seconds will reach, then again the switch is closed. Then when the switch is closed, the corresponding output is this point. The corresponding output is this point. So again after again after TS seconds up to TS seconds again the switch is off. When the switch is off, obviously output is zero. Then after TS one another TS seconds, now you are going to be get the this point as a output. Similarly, for each and every TS seconds, your switch is going to be connected. Every TS seconds, this switch is going to be closed, and the remaining time x of t will be zero for x of n TS. Only for the TS instant, the TS instant, the output is going to be taken as a whatever the x of t output is there, the amplitude. As, as I said in first class, this amplitude is going to be considered for that particular instant. For the TS, this TS seconds, the output is zero, and that means that means the switch is open. So after TS seconds, the switch is closed, so that we are going to be get the big particular instance output. That means for every TS seconds, you are getting the one sample. Now x of x of t will becomes the x of n TS, right? This x of t is a continuous signal. And this one is the discrete signal. This is a discrete signal. Now look into here. As I mentioned, TS is a sampling interval, or can call it as a sampling time. Let us take that TS is equals to one second. Let us take the TS is equals to one second. Now x of t will become into x of n. X of t. Will becomes to x of n. So the same process for continuous signal to get the, from the continuous signal to get the discrete signal. We are doing the sampling process, and the sampling interval. If I take T s is equals to one second, now your x of t will become into the x of n. So we can call it as a this is a continuous and this is a discrete signal. It is a discrete signal. So now we will have the two kind of signals. <coughs> one is a Continuous signal x of t and the discrete signal x of n. These are the two kinds of signals. Now, the topic to continuous time signal can be represented as in a two ways. Continuous signal can be represented as in two ways, and the discrete signal can be represented as. <coughs> let us take it as a discrete signal can be represented as in four ways. So, what are those? We will look into it one by one later. So, suppose first one is graphical method. Graphical method means. We are representing each and every signal in a pictorial format. So same signal I mentioned, x of t and independent variable or dependent variable is t and its amplitude or magnitude it is x of t and this is a independent. Let us take independent variable and this is a signal name it is. So this signal x of t is depending on independent variable t. So amplitude is x of t. Now, what is a re graphical representation? Means this is a graph. So in two dimensional, I am representing. Let us take one. This is a signal format. If I take one any basic type of the signal, if I take this one is a amplitude one, and this is a t. This is a zero amplitude. Let us take it as a x of t. Since it is a u uh, one is there, you can call it as a u of t. It's a Unit step function. We will come into later after you know at the basic types of the signal. So graphical representation means pictorial representation of the any physical phenomenon. Pictorial representation. Pictorial representation of the any physical function. Similarly, second one it is a functional representation. Functional representation means we are representing the signal in mathematical domain. Mathematical, you can call it as a mathematical representation. Does a second one? It is a function functional representation. You can call it as a mathematical representation. Whatever the function is there, 
this function we are representing in the form of mathematical notation let us take this is a another function this is one example i taken and the second one is a another function we are we don't know the exact uh, mathematical representation for this one because we are taking it as a blindly and let us take this one is a another one this one is a another signal i mention it is u of t a continuous and a check function in the form of mathematically see for the infinity time from minus infinity to infinity let us take from the minus infinity to zero we will have the amplitude is zero and rewriting it in for the make you understand clearly that is t amplitude is 1 for 0 to infinity and this is minus infinity time this is a infinity time okay from the minus infinity to 0 you will have the amplitude is 0 and from 0 to plus infinity we will have the amplitude is 1 so that is the two amplitudes we have only two amplitudes in a unit step function that is u of t that is a, you can write it as a amplitude for one is 1 second one is 0 now where you have this 1 that is a time domain representation from 0 to infinity i can name t greater than or equals to 0 from 0 to t that means t tending to the infinity above the 0 or t less than 0 t less than 0 t less than 0 this is a t less than 0 time this is a t greater than or equals to 0 time for the t less than 0 i will have the amplitude is 0 and for the t greater than 0 i will have the amplitude is 1 so these are the two representation forms for the continuous time signal first one is graphically graphically means purely pictorial representation this is a pictorial representation of the signal and the functional means second one purely mathematical representation with the one example you can see this is a u of t this is a graphical representation and its mathematical representation or you can call it as a functional representation is a second one now coming to the discrete time signals as i mentioned till now we studied about the x of t now this time i am studying about the x of n so this is about the discrete time signals as i mentioned graphical functional both we already studied but anyway we are going to be see in a discrete format let us take graphical as i mentioned for the earlier signal u of to make you understand first of all i am getting from the x of t to x of n first okay x of t to x of n because i am taking same example u of t to u of n i need to get the u of t to u of n take this as a continuous signal this is the continuous signal t and this one is a one amplitude i can name it as a u of t which is in a time domain and that is discrete u of t now i am converting this into the discrete domain with the time i mean sampling interval is one i take in so that this nts nts will becomes nts will becomes only in where ts is equals to 1 so now this is the our signal so actually we need to get the this signal in discrete domain that means i am taking uh, integer values n is equals to 0 1 2 3 so and so like that so amplitude is fixed that means this line is a one line let us take this is a one line so now what is the first one at zero switch is closed once switch is closed i will get this point at to one at the remaining time switch is open that means you are not going to be get the any amplitude this value is zero similarly at one you will get the amplitude is one at two you will get the amplitude is one at three you will get the amplitude is one like that so up to infinity you will get the these samples so i can write like this this is a this is the graphical representation of the u of n as i mentioned it is now you are coming from u of t to u of n this is the graphical representation now coming to the functional representation functional representation means that must be in a mathematical domain i mentioned clearly in a earlier slide so same from the minus infinity to 0 you will have the amplitude is 0 and from the 0 to plus infinity you will have the amplitude is 1 you have the amplitude is 1 okay 
So that should be represent in mathematically. So I can write functional format u of n. I can write as a functional form of u of n is equals to amplitude. How many amplitudes are there? Either one, either one we have, or zero. That means I will have one or zero only. Then my question is, when you have the one from the zero to infinity, that means where n greater than or is equals to zero, it is also included zero. Zero and above amplitude is one. Zero and above amplitude is one. Where n less than zero, then amplitude is zero. So this is the graphical representation of the signal. Now coming to the tabular method. Tabular method means you are representing the same signal in the form of one single table. So as I will mention it is n x of n. Let us take it is a minus infinity. So and so I will have the minus one and zero one. Two, three, so and so, plus infinity. These are the time values. We will have the time values, and what is its corresponding value? At p is equal, sorry, n is equal to zero. At n is equal to zero, what is the amplitude we have? One. At n is equal to zero, you will have its corresponding value is one. And n is equal to where n greater than or equal to zero, you will have the amplitude is one. That means for the remaining all, all are one. For the remaining, all are one. When comes to minus infinity, at for this side, at zero to minus infinity time, in between you will have all are zeros. Let us take here minus two also to make you understand. So this is the <coughs> representation. We need to put the put it in table. This is the tabular representation of the signal. Same signal x of n with respect to n is varying, and at zero. At uh, sorry, at minus infinity, you will have the amplitude is zero. At zero, you will have the amplitude is one. At infinity, you will have the amplitude is one. Same information is corresponding to the u of n, which is given by the same mathematical function also. And coming to the next one, it is sequence. Sequence means we are representing the same signal in the form of sets. The x of n is represented by zero. Zero dash dash. Let us take put it like this. Dash 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 at zero zero one 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 dash 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 like this. That means this is the representation of sequence. That means you are representing the signal in the form of sets. If you represent the signal in the form of sets, it is a sequence representation. Now look at here. So if I given this signal, there might be one confusion. Uh, the zero zeros are there and one one is there. If, if I mention it is x of n instead of putting x of n, let us take it as a u of n because it is related to u of n. Now, where is the zero location? There is a zero location. If you come across this point, to make you understand, we can represent the sequence in the form of a set and put the bold the letter bold the Amplitude value, whatever the location you are bold at, that means that is a zeroth location. This is a zeroth location. Or else you can represent in another way also. U of n can be represented same zero zero one 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 and so and so, and you just give the arrow. Just below the number, you just give the arrow. So these two represent the. If you bold the number, it means this one starts from the zero. This uh, amplitude represents the zeroth location amplitude. Or else, you can put the same one in normal and put the give the arrow representation. From the arrow representation onwards, zero will start. That means that arrow indicates the zero location. These are the four representation of the time signals. One is for, uh, for the discrete time signals. One is graphical. Second one it is a functional. Third one is tabular and sequence. Graphical means pictorial representation. Functional means it is a mathematical representation of the physical phenomenon. And tabular means same tabular representation 
of the any physical phenomenon is named it as a tabular uh, tabular representation of signal next one it is sequence if you represent the signal in the form of sets then it is called a sequence representation that right, if you looking to the basic signals so in basic signals we will have the uh, around 10 signals uh, in first one it is we are going to be see the step signal same whatever the example we have discussed in this one step means the tighty itself it is a step look like in staircase first step is there let us take this is a one step it is a step only single step that means step starts from the zero and it continues time t amplitude is you can call it as a i am taking now it is a a amplitude is a okay now i am naming the signal it as u of t this is step signal and its mathematical representation is u of t is equals to i mentioned clearly from the 0 to infinity amplitude is a amplitude is a from the 0 to minus infinity amplitude is 0. So, that we have only two amplitudes either 0, either 0 amplitude or A amplitude is there. So, I am naming it as a A amplitude, this is the 0 amplitude. Now, look at here. So, we need to write the where is the location of this eighth amplitude times. I can put the time t greater than or equals to 0. From the 0 to t, that means above the 0, you will have the amplitude is A and uh, below the 0 you will have the amplitude is 0 this is a one kind so actually this is a we are naming it as a step signals not unit step signals when i said it is a unit step signal if i mention clearly unit step signal you see what is the a a is some amplitude constant so a is a some amplitude whatever if I said unit step signal means that A amplitude A is equals to 1. Now, the signal will becomes amplitude is 1. Signal name itself it is U of T, but there is no change in title. But amplitude is going to be 1 and its mathematical representation U of T, if I mention 1 or 0, where T greater than or equals to 0 and T less than 0. Is it clear? Because and if I said clearly step function means there is no or we do not know about the amplitude that is a step signal and its structure is step signal but we do not know the amplitude that is why we are taking it as some factor called its constant amplitude A. A might be anything any, any positive value or negative value also we will come across the why it is negative in later, later classes. Now, that A is positive or negative we are not mentioned about it. If I said clearly it is a unit step means it is a A is equals to 1 and the signal definition will be considered as a in, in a location you are going to get the amplitude is 1 that is about the step signal and the unit step signal step and uh, unit step signal these are the graphical representations and these are the mathematical representation ok next uh, impulse signal and this impulse signal is represented by the del of t impulse signal is represented by the del of t and if you look at the graphical representation for this one 0 1 2 3 4 amplitude is infinity and you need to write the name of the signal if you look into the signal you generally we are calling it these two signals step and impulse are the st uh, test signals in this one impulse signal defined at 0 only at 0 we will have the amplitude is infinity the remaining all locations it is a 0 is it clear represent the same signal del of t how many amplitudes are there either infinity or 0 we have the infinity or 0 infinity or 0 now where we have the infinity amplitude exactly only 0 at a time t is equals to 0 we will have the amplitude is infinity that means t is equals to 0 and t not equals to 0. 
this is about the impulse function this is about the impulse function now look into impulse signal definition this is a not uh, it is not sufficient to definition for the impulse function we need to uh, define another factor two factors are there first one is this one first one is this one if anyone ask you what is the definition of the impulse signal then you should write two statements one is a del of t that means amplitude is infinity amplitude is infinity this is the first point second point area under minus infinity to infinity del of t dt must be unity area under impulse function area under impulse is unity this is a another factor so to say a signal is a impulse signal you need to define two factors one is the amplitude of the signal at zero location at zero time t amplitude is going to be infinity first point and the second one is the same time the area under the impulse function must be unit these are the two factors you need to remember it next first one is the, this is a representation of the signal in a graphical way which is a graphical and this one is a mathematical and coming to the ramp signal ramp signal means you will have the same graphical time t at r of t representation is r of t at from the zero the amplitude is going to be very slow with a particular slope with a particular slope now this r of t can be given as time from 0 to infinity minus infinity so if you vary if you look at some m constant with the m slope and let us take m is a some slope and uh, now r of t can be given by r of t is equal to you can just m t it's a line passing through the origin y equals to mx format it's like y r of t equals to mt where t greater than or equals to 0 then 0 where t less than 0 this is the ramp signal this is the ramp signal one is the graphical representation and the mathematical representation okay is it clear first one is step signal and step signal mathematical representation is this one u of t is equals to amplitude a t greater than or equals to 0 and 0 for t less than 0 and the impulse signal it is infinity amplitude must be there and area must be unity under the impulse function ramp signal the slope is empty if i said unit ramp then slope m is equals to 1 and its mathematical representation will becomes r of t is equals to t where t greater than equals to 0 0 where t less than 0 okay is it clear so this is about the third signal ramp signal and uh, we will discuss the remaining signals in the next class till now we have already discussed first one one is representation representation of one is continuous and discrete and the third one sorry second one types of signals we have seen impulse and step function and ramp function so these are the topics we have covered in a present lecture in the next topic we will look into the remaining signals exponential sinusoidal and the signum and the remaining signal we will look into later in the, in the next class and the thank you.